Welcome back. Um, back onto the coronation. You may remember last time the uh, 4QD unit was fitted to the chassis. Uh, so now we're going to start wiring the rest of it up. I'll get it into a position where I can work on it and then uh, take it from there. To begin with, I'll flip it over, noise suppression on the cabling, and then get to the other side. So, the first stage was this noise suppression, which I fitted to the wires just after the motor before they come through to the other side to then go to the unit. So let's get them flipped over and wired on. So my personal preference when I'm putting these wires into a chocolate block is to put one of these crimped ferrules on the end. That way it's a solid bar that's going into the um, chocolate block and are not clamping down on the strands which can part or come out or whatever. Uh, I would add, I've known people in the past say you need the right colour for the polarity of the wire. That's not right. Uh, these crimp-on connectors, oh, sorry. These crimp-on connectors come in three different colours. I think you can get more, but the three main colours are red, blue, and yellow. And the difference between them the reason for the different colours is the cable size. So the different colours determine the different cable size. So I'm going to crimp these ones on and then we can go into a bit of chocolate block to then extend the wire up to the uh, QD box. Now the cabling that they provided, um, the main battery cable, that was borderline, I, th I think it's the same size as the motor, cables coming out of the motor just fitted in the blue but part of the uh, noise suppression instructions said to put a capacitor uh, at the chocolate block just there where we connect it together um, I wasn't overly keen on the chocolate on that going into the chocolate block separately again in case it didn't grip it and it came out so I actually threaded it. I, I went up a size on the uh, connector blocks uh, to yellow, which is what they'd used on the ends that they crimped on anyway. So they provided wires with the kit. Um, and I actually put the capacitors through the through that and crimped them into the there at the same time as putting the block. Then I'll put it into the turn block and then that's the motor connected. So it says here, battery isolator on the negative and fuse on the positive line. Well, what I'm going to do is what was on there before and put a breaker. That was my main on off switch and it was mounted just past the buffer beam. So that was both a uh, fuse and uh, an isolator. So I'm going to reinstate that. My only issue with this one, it is 32 amp. You can't, you can sort of make it out if you search hard, but the bracket that was put in for it to clip to, the this clip here is broken. So I'm gonna reinstate this as well. I'm, I'm going to, or replace rather, replace this, put a new one in. Um, if I go out today, I might just pop to electrical shop and buy one. So with the motor connected up and the battery leads all connected up, I've not put them into the uh, battery yet, but the lead reaches and the negative reaches at the other end. Which needs to wire the controller up, which is this lead here but it's too big for the holes in the panel here so I'm going to open one of them out and then uh, feed that through bolt that in place and then run the cables and and work out uh, the special fancy connector which goes onto the uh, 4QD box Right, so connecting up this multi-core, now that it's screwed in, 
is quite a simple process apparently. So you get the, the wires, why not, here's the, 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 the block. You get them in the right order, which is green, blue, come on, green, blue, red, That one's just a rubber thing. Green, blue, red, black, white, yellow. And then you get this unit. And pass them all. through the holes and then it says to use some parallel pliers I can't find any parallel pliers no idea where they are but I'm going to use some five holes going this way They click shut and they have then pierced the cables and are connected. So all that's left to do for that is trim off the excess. Excuse the noise, there's some scaffolding being removed. Um, so if I then Do with some cutters that get closer. I'll get them trimmed off and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so I've trimmed them off now. Um, the lights come around, it's shiny inside. So I apologise for that. Click that in and let's show you what it looks like around here. So there we go. That is in place. I will now connect up the battery and see if it works. So it wasn't working. I've opened it up and there's a, a link here that was set to 24 volt. So I've set it back to 12 volt. I'll put it back together and hopefully we'll have a bit more success. So with a little bit of fiddling about, I've changed the voltage to 12 volts. So if I had the box off, take the cover off, and there's a little connector that changes it to 12 volts. Turn the power on, and we have power on the controller here. Flick the switch, and we go the other way. So, all that left to be done is wiring the horn, which is to be the next little quiz as to how I'm going to do that. So let me just have a little think and I'll come back to you. So the horn relay board uh, was supplied with some little plastic spacers. So what I'm going to do, I want to mount it in this area here, but the plate, none of the flat sections of plate are big enough here. So what I'm going to do, I found a bit of alley and I will drill the holes, mount it on there, cut it to length, and then I'll fold the top so it meets that angle. And then it'll come down vertical, uh, just a little bit away from this, and, and we'll be able to mount it. Then that can be wired up. So I've got the horn board wired in it's got a positive there which goes through a fuse back to the positive on the uh, box and the negative goes to the negative on the box so they're just piggybacked off of those uh, terminals and then the horn is connected to these i do have a slight issue so 
it now all works. However, as soon as you operate the horn, it doesn't. Um, they did supply a couple of diodes um, to put across the horn, just to try and control any um, interference. So I'm going to try them. If not, I might be looking for a new horn. So it is still doing the same thing. I'll turn it on. Got power. I'll pray the horn. I've got no power. So there's an issue. Um, it has got the diode in there now and that's not helped. So the next thing for me to do, I might try a different horn. Um, if you've got any suggestions on where to get a horn, what horns to put in it, please do let me know. Um, and yeah, so for now it's working, it's just the horn doesn't. Um, and yeah, I, I need to get a new uh, breaker because at the moment that one that isn't staying on the bracket that we've got for it but other than that it's an operational loci again um, the next thing for me to do will be to run some cables from the battery terminals straight up to the dash here some, somewhere so I can charge it without having to have a lid off um, so that will be my next little job. I have got, I did have this lead in there before which sort of tucked away and that um, connected to the leads on my charger um, but I'd rather have something a bit more positive like banana plugs or something like that. So again if you've got any suggestions for that let me know but for now it's working uh, it can go for a run. Um, I just need to start, put the body back on, adjust the plate that goes inside the body and put the roof back on. So yeah, thanks for watching and we'll be back another day.